we are going to talk about serial jobs next. And the magic part here is that we've already basically gone over all the important parts. So we will have a quick little introduction and put all the pieces we've talked about already together, give you a good big chunk of time to work yourself on exercises or read or whatever you do. And then we come back and quickly go over them. So let's get right started. Uh, CMO screen is yeah, here. If you... OK. Yeah, so, so, so you... yeah, so currently we, we are we came here into the login node and over here we managed to we managed to run stuff here so if you think about yesterday we connected here we managed to run stuff here uh today we run here and we use the s run also to run stuff on the compute nodes as well mm -hmm. so what if we just after we have managed to get job running in the into the compute node what if we don't anymore like want to be there and keep the connection open and want to watch the thing going on. So this is the non-interactive job or the serial job uh, that we will be focusing. Yeah. And yesterday, you remember the, this analog. Do you want to, Richard, yeah. uh, so, remind people of it? So we have the recipe. Well, the important part for now is the recipe is basically your code. And we are writing up like the daily instructions for a cook. So the cook will be told, okay, please request this much, or you have this much time, this much resources, uh, and go and run this recipe, prepare this recipe, and then come back when you're done. Yeah, if you've ever like uh, like put the water start started boiling like over here it says that boil water five minutes it's boring stuff like you don't want to be there watching mm -hmm. it would be better to hire your own italian like tell them to okay i want to do this recipe i want you to do it for me and i'll expect it to be done in like 10 minutes or something like do it for me and i'll be back then and i'll see what's happening and this is the yeah. basically the idea of non-interactive job you write the recipe uh, that what you want to be done and then you tell the cook to do it and the cook uh has the resources hopefully that that uh they can actually do the job like if they have the bats and bones that uh but like the all of the stuff yeah. that they need to cook the stuff they can do it okay so should so, we jump into yeah, this let's go serial so serial job. jobs so our first job script so this is a text file so i guess we make it with nano our preferred text editor what directory do you put it in? Well, you put it so, just in yeah, there was, wherever you are now. There was already questions there about work directory, like uh, where should we run this stuff? And yeah, in in the clusters, like in this demo, there is usually this kind of a data directory where people store their stuff, some big data directory that you have. In Triton, it's it's in the work directory. So uh, it's in, you can type, yeah. for example, echo work directory mm -hmm. to see uh, see where it is. So I'm, this PWD tells me where am I now. I'm in this yeah. subfolder. So, so okay. over here, so I will make write the script, the script. With nano first serial.sh. Okay, so yeah. we open this. Um, we copy it, so bin bash, s batch, time, five minutes. What is this first line, Richard? So this looks a lot like what we did for the interactive jobs, right? So these capital S batch means this is the Slurm parameter, and then we give it the exact same kind of argument that we learned last time. So output tells it that the output text of the program will be stored in a file called hello.out, which makes sense. And then we give the actual job here with srun, echo, and then all of the stuff. And this is basically a shell script. So things like dollar sign user means insert my username here. Dollar sign host name mm -hmm. is where I are. So we don't need to worry yeah, about what this text is. Yeah. 
the first line is so called she bang so it it's it means like which program is used to execute the script so and, and you don't have to worry about that too much you can just copy paste the bin bash on every slurm script yeah okay so let's yeah. save it with control x and save okay so now yeah. we have a file called for serial yeah so i used we... the cat to catenate it yeah so we have a yeah. program to run it which is sbatch so we do sbatch hello dot or first serial dot sh um yeah so let's run it and maybe immediately run slurm q afterwards too well, fast we don't see so basically the whole cluster ran it um yeah okay so we see yeah. an output uh hello dot out so should we use say cat to view it yeah okay so we see hello so if we tomis s1 you are on node csl46 the time is whatever time it is so yeah, if yeah. we compare it to to the script over here, like it it filled out my username here, the host name here, and then it ran this date command, so which provided the, the date. So it actually did yeah. something uh, there. Yeah, and you can see that it did it on on a different uh, different node. And if I look at some history, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, I can yeah. see that it ran it on a different node. Yeah, it says yeah. CSL46 there. OK. Yeah. So you you notice that there is this srun command in, in here. So yeah. why srun uh, in this script? Like, why 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 is there like srun in my sbatch script? So the, the thing is that this is this srun tells Slurm that, OK, this is a job step. This is especially important if you're doing MPI codes because it allows the uh, Slurm to do uh, uh, ma many things on the background, but in in regular codes, it's usually like those pieces of the program program that actually do something. You usually want to put this S run in front of it. The reason is that that you can get then like uh, this, you can get this uh, more detailed output uh, for each of these uh, job steps. So you can see here that uh, like you you will get like mm -hmm. the job job id and the individual job step zero uh is recorded separately on a separate line so you can see where your code is and when it's running yeah. so let's say you have a code that has multiple things to do uh you can have them as individual job steps so you can know what program did what yeah uh, what kind of resources they used what kind of efficiency did they have uh did they crash on certain job and so forth yeah okay so the next section in the page is setting resource parameters and really there's not much more to say here so we've already experimented with these resource parameters in interactive jobs and you use the uh hash hash ss batch to specify it in the script. And it's usually good to include these in the script so you have a reference for what you ran in the future. Okay. Yeah, so so yeah, so basically like like this recipe over here, like if if you don't like to cook with with recipes, you might get different kinds of food every time you cook. Like if you don't know what like you just you just wing it and and just put whatever you feel like into the into the uh research that you're doing you get basically like something happens and you get something uh but if you want to do like if you want to replicate the results which is in science is quite uh you uh, usually a good idea uh you want to document what kind of recipe you use to cook the results that you got so uh the serial writing everything into a serial job helps you document the whole process of running the code that you're doing it helps you to make make so certain that like you will always get the same results if you run the same serial job you should get the same results uh, so uh, yeah it's a good idea to use serial jobs to document how to run the code yeah okay there's a little bit on monitoring your jobs here 
but really we just talked about this we talked about this a little bit under interactive you mm -hmm. know how to use slurm history and so on and also yeah. it's the next section that we're going to talk about so yeah there was also a question in the hackmd that in some sites the slurm command might not be there so it's available in a git github if you want uh, there's a link in the hackmd mm -hmm. uh, other sites might want to provide it uh, as well if you're interested uh, but you can also you can also download for yourself or you can uh, use these sq commands and s act commands but they're a bit more cumbersome because they don't have a like the S slurm <laughs> command is basically a wrapper for these that provides sensible output uh, by default so uh, yeah. you can use whatever you want but uh, yeah the slurm command is recommended here in alto okay so next is partitions. So this is something that we've gone through a lot of work to try to hide. So you don't need to specify because, oh, canceling quick, your job. Quickly mention, uh, yeah, canceling jobs. So if you have a job that is running and you want to cancel it for some reason, uh, you can just use S cancel and the ID of the job to cancel it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So partitions are something you don't need to worry about at Alto. In some sites, you might need to. But basically, it's different groups of nodes, which um, like you might specify, OK, this is a debugging job. So I'm running it in a debug partition, which will finish very quickly. Or I'm running this on uh, short nodes, which will are designed for things that take less than four hours. But really, for the most part, this is automatically specified here at Alto. So let's not dwell on it very yeah. much. But on, on other sites and on CSC machines and uh, other places, you might need to specify this dash P and the partition name if you want mm -hmm. to submit your jobs to a certain partition. So basically, yeah. like uh, different machines with different kinds of capabilities are in, usually in different partitions. So yeah. uh, GPU jobs go to GPU partition and stuff like that. Uh, in Alta, we try to do it automatically on the back end, but it's good to know about it. Yeah. And with that, we're at the exercises. So it wasn't too hard, was it? Yeah. Or at least it and it's be... good to remember here that like what we're doing now uh, is like we're building on top of the like uh, on top of one thing on top of the other. So so if you think about again the cooking thing, we are making the cooking we have to do less cooking ourselves and we get more stuff done mm -hmm. <laughs> and like somebody else is doing the cooking for us and we just need to tell what yeah. like we are growing up in the ladder we are becoming like restaurant managers instead of like mm -hmm. doing the cooking ourselves constantly so yeah. uh, it's everything builds on top of each other like all of the stuff builds on top of uh, these scripts basically and this kind of syntax. So it's a good idea to, to get a hang of it uh, as early as possible. So now you have about 25 or 30 minutes to work on the exercises alone or in Zoom. And then we'll come back and we will briefly review things. And then we will have a break. And then we'll talk about monitoring a little bit more. Um, yeah, I guess, uh, I see mostly other questions that are answered in HackMD, so we can continue in a bit. Okay, see you later then. Bye. And we are back. Yeah. So we're going to try to quickly go over the examples. I see some good questions here. So I guess let's try to do the exercises quickly. So Simo, yeah. your screen, you've begun this. So um, number one, basic batch job. Submit a batch job that just runs host name. So I guess you make the script, you open it. We basically copy the same things that we've had before. Once we start doing this a lot, we basically have some scripts that work and keep copying it over and over again. There's nothing wrong with that. CMO setting the time to one hour and 15 minutes, the memory to 500. Um, the job name and output file, we might have to go look 
at the reference up above for what these arguments are. But yeah, so so uh, anyway. I'll quickly mention that. Uh, let's look at job name. Yeah, that's okay. So job name you can give. Yeah, like these kinds of documentation or things that like some things you have to remember, like the memory and and time. Those are stuff that you you uh, usually want to like uh, just. Do do it over and over until you remember it because they, they you use them all the time. But yeah. for example, job job name and stuff like that, uh, there are documentation for it. And I personally just go over back to the documentation all the time because who has time and capacity in the brain to remember all of this? It's not worth yeah. the, the effort. Okay. Um, so what name will um, you take? Host name um, test maybe. Script, yeah, yeah host okay. name test is a good one. Yeah. Okay, uh, set, set the output file. So this is dash dash output equals host name test dot out. Okay, so in it is just host name. So since we know host name is a trivial program, we aren't adding s run in front. So we save yeah. and we s batch it. So it's submitted. Uh, let's do storm queue. Okay, yeah, so it finished very quickly. And if we do uh, ls, we can see the host name test.out. And yeah, so it ran on that. And if we do storm history, it will show the same node name, CSL46. So that's exercise one. We did it really quickly because it's basically what we did above. So now next is submitting and canceling a job. Um, so uh, sleepjob.sh or sleepscript.sh, yeah. yeah. So all the same stuff as before, the bin bash line, uh, s batch, do we, I guess we can do that. Let's put 10 minutes there. Memory, 50 megabytes. Okay, so now... Let's put a S run this time. Oh, yeah, okay. So sleep is a Unix command that says do nothing for the number of seconds given. So this will wait for five minutes just there. So we save. We submit it with sbatch as usual. And if we slurm his uh, queue, we see, well, what do you know, this time it's actually running because it's taking a while. So that point of this exercise is to cancel it. So what do we do? Um, we have to find the job ID, which we see listed in Slurm history and also when we submitted it. So we copy that and S cancel. And it takes a second. And it's done. Storm Q, it's not there. Should we look at the output? Yeah, let's do that. So you uh, notice that this time uh, I didn't add an output name for the job. So we got this automatic output name for the file. So it was slurm dash and then job ID. So that is that is mm -hmm. the uh, automatic output. You can also use this like there's wildcards you can check in the documentation there's wildcards that you can use in your if you want to have like this job id or various ids in your output file names you can you can find it in the in the documentation yeah okay so the last exercise this is a little bit more interesting uh checking the output so we're going to make a new Slurm script that has this little script in it. So what it is, it's basically a shell script that says for the numbers one to 30, we will print the date and we'll sleep for 10 seconds and we'll repeat. So the point here is to have some output that is, um, mm, that is um, like continuing to come. So we can basically see that it takes a little while for the output to actually start appearing in the file. So 
So it's submitted, and we can do slurm queue. So, okay, what's the output here? It's this one, we can cat it. Okay, so we see two things in there. Uh, if we keep catting it, then more is appearing. So this is a common thing that you might do. So you submit a job and it has these things that are, like it's continuing to give output. Like you made your code, so you have um, print statements in there that say like loading data, uh, processing the data, uh, done 10,000 trials, 220,000 trials, and so on. And you can, by catting the file, see how it's going. Simo is using a command called tail-f, which is used, so it basically keeps the file open, and every time there's a new line, it prints it immediately. And this is pretty useful for following the jobs. Control-c um, to quit it. Yeah. yeah, so control C as usual to quit things. And yeah, that's the exercises we asked you to. Do. Yeah, and there was also this kind of like login, logback thing uh, that was meant to demonstrate that basically, like, if you leave and the job is there running, you can close the, all of the connections to Triton and it's still running on the background. So, uh, yeah, it's it's running there. And it's it's not dependent on the login node either. So if the login node goes down, uh, mm. that can happen with security updates or some sort of other reason. Uh, it's not affected. Like it's it's completely independent now. It has flown the nest and it's completely independent and doing its uh, own thing. Okay, let's check out HackMD before the break. Let's see. So. Questions on exercises. Yeah, so if you submit something without specifying these, it uses the defaults. So, I mean, if it's really a small test, then okay. <coughs> but if it's anything significant that you're running a lot, better to be explicit, just so you know. Um, yeah. I think this was answered here. S batch versus S run plus screen. So I think these things answer it pretty well. Like if you're doing one thing at a time, so screen is the thing that lets you run a program interactively, and then you can log out and log back in and see it again. So if you don't know what screen is, don't worry about this answer. But um, yeah, so if you do this and you have only one thing running, then you're not going to forget about it. But if you start having things where you're running many different, like two or three different things, you eventually get to the point where it's hard to keep track of everything that's going on. And then using sbatch is better. And once you start running 10, 20 like, um, array jobs of many trials, then you really need as batch yeah and it's also this kind of like fundamental idea that if you're doing stuff non-interactively then why not use the thing that is designed to do non-interactively mm -hmm. uh so so basically like if you see like uh like this kind of a, like a uh like a cross-shaped yeah. screw i cannot remember it maybe maybe you can open it with uh like a phillips screwdriver or maybe with your keys or something like that you can use whatever tools to get the same stuff yeah. done but maybe it would be better to use the tool that's been designed for that specific thing <laughs> like instead of like uh yeah. doing something because like these things are designed for a reason and and the reason is that it, they make the use easier and if yeah. uh, if you're battling against the tools then it's it's usually not worth it. Yeah. This question about what I meant when I said it was a trivial program. So basically, we knew that host name would take zero seconds to run and basically zero memory. So it's not worth getting a separate output line in the history there. Um, for any program that we're running for real science and real calculations, then I would probably be adding it there. 
Yeah. There's few exceptions, like for example, uh, in our cluster currently, there's a bit of a bug with the GPU allocation and S run. So some of the GPU jobs uh, don't work with S run. So yeah. that's in the GPU page mentioned the, for technical reasons. Yeah. Uh, then there's, you can also use S run to launch. Let's say you can launch a job that asks for a certain amount of resource and you can launch individual jobs with different resources within the same job with multiple calls of S run, but those are like very esoteric. And if you're using something like a Spark or like you want to create your own data cluster or something inside the job, then it's feasible. But but in most cases, like no, you yeah. don't you don't necessarily need the S run, it's just a helper thing. Yeah. So let's see. That for loop. Uh this question here, Simo, can you sh or show this again? The for loop. Yeah. Uh, here we go. Sure. Mm. Uh -huh. Date script. So there's no S run. There's no S run in front of four because this is a shell construct. You could put an S run in front of each date here, and then you would have 30 individual. Yeah, that's a, uh, actually a good point. Uh, let's let's do this just just to show like what happens. Like if we look at the Slurm history, uh, history here, we can see, for example, that uh, that the um, date script, the previous date script that we run, uh, it produced only this batch and extern. So these are like, uh, like this, this batch collects information on, on the whole job it, uh, itself and the extern con, uh, or when, when the job is initialized and the extern contains like those commands that don't have S run in front of it. But now that we have added the S run, if we submit the date script and we uh look at the slum history uh oh well once it's run a few cycles let's let it run a few cycles um we can see that it will produce like a huge bunch of these uh let's wait for not one cycle more okay okay let's cancel it so in the history script In the history, we can see now that this one job has like this, all of these lines uh, for it. Yeah. And you can see that the first so uh, there first times. one's completed. And then this was like the job was then canceled. Like the whole thing was canceled. Mm -hmm. But but many of these steps already completed. So let's say you have a job that you want to like analyze uh, you have, I want to have a for loop that analyzes within the job. It does like yeah. analysis of let's say hundred different data files or something, mm -hmm. and then the job runs out of memory or something. You can use the information here to determine which files were already analyzed or which file is corrupted or something like that. Because you know, like on a job uh, uh, job step level, which uh, jobs mm -hmm. worked and which jobs don't. Of course, it yeah. depends, and of course, you shouldn't have like tens of thousands of these, uh, because then you will DDoS our uh, queue system, but yeah. like uh, create problems. But but if you okay. have something that you can yourself manage, it's a good thing. Yeah. So should we go to a break now for 10 minutes and we come back with monitoring and basically the last part of the day? So, yes, thanks a lot and see you soon.